Charles Mutinda, Deputy State Council. For the National Assembly, we have Eric Zumbo, I'm present, Paul Nyamodi, and George Murugayo. For the Speaker of the National Assembly, we have Benson Milimo, Josphat Milimo, sorry, we introduce Mr. Murugara. Mr. Murugara George for National Assembly. For the Speaker of the National Assembly, we have Benson Milimo, I'm present, Mano. Josphat Kuyon. Hello, I'm present. Josphat Kuyon. <coughs> K-U-Y-I-O-N-I. For the Senate, we have Professor Ojenda Tom, Senior Counsel. Present. Moni Mukele Edwin. I'm present, Madam. And Senator Hilary Sigay. I am present. Moni who? Moni Mukele Edwin. And Professor? And Senator Hilary Sigay. That is for the Senate. For the Speaker of the Senate, we have Mercy Tanji. And Peter Wanyama. For Professor Kindiki. Here. And DP Domini, we have Mudomi. I'm present, my lord. Moses Kip Kutge and Ken Mayu. I'm present. your petition. In petition 565 of 2024, may I at the very outset before I state counsel appearing the deputy president applicant, may I at the very outset say that I am stating the Quora under protest. We are not willingly here participating in the elaborate. But let the record show that council appearing for the deputy president today before this honorable court appear at the protest. Say the basis will be elaborated later. I appear or waited for the record. I appear with my colleagues, Tom Acharya, Alicia Ongoya, Pei Waigua, Victor Soanya, present, my lord. Nebo Ajiro, I am present, my lord. Andrew Muge, this, this we are recording. <coughs> Victor Swanya Ogeto. Dave Wanjiro. Andrew Muge. George Wandati. Mr. Sakim Park and Joe, Joe, John John. Present, my lord. <laughs> my lord, see your leadership as I sit down. I seek clarity 
on whether it is only petition 565 of 2024 that this honorable court has before it today or whether they are not in their petition. I thank you. <clears throat> May please your lordships and my lady judge, in E015 of 2024, the quorum for the respondents is the same, save for His Excellency the President who has been sued in person and is being represented by Adrian Kamoro. For the purposes of clarity, just uh, I'll be the For the attorney general is Professor Gidu Mugai, senior counsel, Shadrach Mose, solicitor general. Emmanuel Bita, Deputy Chief State Counsel, and Charles Mutinda, Deputy Chief State Counsel. For the National Assembly, Eric Gumbo, Paul Nyamodi, and Mugala George. For the Speaker of the National Assembly is Benson Milimo and Josphat Milioni. For the Senate, Professor Ojena Tom, Senior Counsel, Moni Mukele Edwin. And Senator Hillary Tigay. For the Speaker of the Senate is Marcy Tanji and Peter Wanyana. <coughs> For His Excellency the President, <coughs> Adrian Kamoto. For Professor Kendiki, we can eat it. Mudomi Tiankolu, Moses Kipkogei, and Ken Lele. Your Lordships and uh, Your Lordship, my name is Kite Mongai, appearing in this matter with uh, the following <coughs> 
Maloja, in this matter, I appear with uh, Senator Daniel Manzo. My name is Kibe Mungai. I thought I'd say it now. Kibe Mungai. I appear in this matter, my lord, with Senator Daniel Manzo. Present, my lord. Mr. Deguanjiro. I'm present. Honorable Jerry Minor. Present, my lord. Mr. George Santimpa. Present, my lord. Mr. Andrew. Uh, Mr. Kibe. Yes, oh, sorry. We are recording. We are recording. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Mr. Dan Manzo. Dan Manzo. Mr. Deguanjiro. Present, my lord. Senator Honorable Jerry Maina. Present, my lord. Mr. George Sankipa. I'm present, my lord. Mr. Andrew Muge. Mr. Kirabu Aruta. Present, my lord. And Mr. Kenneth Makiba, who, who is on the way. And Professor Ogada. Professor Ogada, present. <coughs> And uh, Kenneth Matiba is on the way. Malauja, uh, we appear in this matter that uh, continues to be referred as Kerugoya, petition number A015 of 2024, that uh, appears to have been filed on the same day. You are here for which party? We appear for the petitioners. This petition E015 2024 <coughs> file again we appear for the first interested party that is the deputy president <coughs> of the Republic of Kenya in this E015. Reloads again, let the record capture and show the council appearing for the first interested party <coughs> appear under protest. <coughs> council are as follows Paul Muite, Tom Acharya. Elisha Ongoya, Faith Waigua, Victor Swanya, George Wandati, and John. John. We have that again. Yes, I'm sorry. From what point, my lord? From the third. Paul Muite, Tom Majari. Elisha Ongoya, <coughs> Faith Waigua, Victor Swanya Ogeto, George Wandati, and John John. At the appropriate time, we will be going into the ground and basis 
for peering and approaches. Before there were also certain clarifications that I would like to be given before the hearing for today, direction for today's hearing can be given. My Lord, my Lord, <coughs> before we start today, moves on that part. Are there other parts, especially file number? Petition E572, 2024, deep before the bench. With the programs of the files which are before the court, I would like to address any, any issue. Mm -hmm. My lords, may you kindly equally confirm whether E0, E509, which was consolidated with E522, is before the bench. One reason, Your Lordship, is that the bench was specifically constituted for that purpose. Your logic is being called, it is a combat, you know whether it is before the court. You also want to know whether it is before this court. So, uh, my ladies, kindly, with your kind permission, I would also want to seek clarification for my own petition which I have filed, petition number E567. I had information that that file was also coming up before you this morning, and I would like to know whether the same is before you, and if so, whether uh, I'm also proceeding. When was it filed? It was filed, it was filed on the 18th of October. 2024, and it, was, it came up before Honorable Justice Mamuye, who gave directions that it should come up actually tomorrow. And I believe that is part of the reasons why there is protest in this matter. And then it, I was informed that it's coming up today. So I also need clarification. Please, the court. My name is Dr. Eboso. Uh, my petitioner is E541 of 2024. A petition that was filed on 8th of October. And a petition in which we got direction on 16th of October, directing that it be brought before the Chief Justice for this bench raises the same issues as the issues that were consolidated. And uh, 
we were, uh, I'm appearing in person with this IV1 with the second petitioner, and we were seeking clarification with regard to the reference on that file, because as we can see, the files that were filed on uh, 17th of October, and uh, which the reference uh, was given, and uh, the event was constituted. So we expected that the matter would be mentioned together with this one today. Thank you. Lord, with, with utmost respect, this honorable court is a court of record. And the record is very, very important. My Lord, your leadership, we had the court assist, call out petition E13 of 2024, which you mentioned the word. That is the file that was called. And in order for the record of this code to be systematically accurate and easy to follow, may I with respect ask that we get clarity on this file that was called out, E13224 of the require, before we go to the other matter. And perhaps it is for this honorable court to clarify which files, one by one, are before this honorable court. This Senior Council of Paul Luther, we are giving you time to talk. You see, everybody wants to talk. There will be a time for us also to talk. So I've heard. Thank you. This morning, for the purposes of hearing this morning, the applications which are before the court are application number E0113, which was consolidated in Kelgoya before it arrived here with E0114. Then we have application number E0115, also from Kelgoya. That is application before this court. And then we give direction of those applications. And then uh, E565. Those are the three matters which are before this court and in which the honor of the Chief Justice has constituted this bench for hearing and determination. If you There are articles of uh, uh, constitution of this bench in the court. So the three matters before the court are E565, E015, E0113, and E014. Those are the files and petitions, applications before this court. And those are the applications on which this bench has given direction to password to this bench being duly constituted. So any other applications which we are talking about, we have not cited them, maybe they are here to reach us, but for the purposes of today's hearing, we have these three petitions or applications. Uh, and perhaps also for record that we also appear in E015 in protest. But for the third Lord, she clearly confirmed that the number that is now registered in the matter that came from Kilgoya is E015. And that is important to Lord Chief because of the purposes of administrative transfers of files. Because what was at Kilgoya Lord Chief was E015. Does it therefore mean that that file has not yet been integrated into the Nairobi files? And if so, then how do we appear to proceed before you? And how was the matter that we can raise other issues? Just confirm on the question of the integration of that file in the Nairobi files. Because the last file that we have should be 565 as a Friday. Are we dealing with the matter in Kiroguya or in Nairobi? 
Lord, Lord, for the purpose of uh, A572 of 2024. That's my list of control. That's, that's all I'm, I'm only saying. I have had the directions of the bench. The file is not before it. But I have instructions for the purpose of the work to take that that petition was filed on 18th of October. The same day the Kirugoya file was filed. All the directions in all these files that have been taken to a, grave, a graveyard is that none of these files of ours are borders. The reason as to why Kirugoya files before the learned judges is purely because they have orders to stop the swearing in of the deputy. President elect. The CJ could not have selectively decided to have only one file before you, my lord. This is a trial of the judiciary. It is a trial that goes to the root cause of whether there is impartiality. M Mr. Yes, my lord. Mr. Omari, yes, the file you are addressing us, we have said, is not before us. And we, the files which are before this court are the files in which this specific bench has been impaneled. Thank you, my lord. Allow me to mourn. Because when, because the questions I'm raising are very pertinent that there are files selectively brought before you, I, but I, there are Mr. others. Mr. Omari, we wouldn't know that because, okay. as you understand, we only deal with matters in which we have been empaneled. We do not empanel ourselves. Thank you very much. The empanelment authority has had me now that. Thank you. I'm <laughs> not I had indicated uh, to this honorable court that uh, there will be at least three clarifications. Yes, I to yes. to clarify how these files are before this bench this morning. The three files which were filed in Kerugoya, that is 13, 14, and 15, and 24, had some interim conservatory orders issued to the court. Further to the issuance of those orders, the learned judge made further orders requesting the Honorable Chief Justice to impanel a bench. Those files were transmitted on the basis of that order to the Honorable Chief Justice's office on the 18th of October, 2024. On that very day, the Honorable Deputy Chief Justice and panel this bench to hear those matters. Thereafter, applications were filed online. I think you are all aware that they are operating online. Applications were filed online. When those applications were filed online, those are the ones which 
this bench gave directions for these matters to appear before us today. That is why you are here, and that is the trail, that is the paper trail as to why we are here this morning. So I reiterate the position taken by the presiding judge that we will not be comfortable dealing with any other file, even if it's related to this file, which we did not give directions for it to appear here today. So I think we can now proceed on the basis of that clarification. Thank you, Judge. My Lord, uh, just, yes. just a minute, please. My Lord, just to ask that the, the numerous other petitions that are coming up Yes, my daughter, I believe now I can be able to make the clarification. Yes, my daughter, I believe now I can be able to make the clarification. We are starting with uh, the immediate background that uh, we need to make these clarifications and we take into no, account. No, let, let us finish with Karam first. There's a Karam in E013, which was consolidated in Kerguera with E014. Just take Karam in that case. Your worship is terribly something wrong. And I believe it is important for us to put things in the proper perspective. Because when you call the matters, if a team was not part of what was called, I've not had it, perhaps it would be. Court. The Lordship in E015, there has never been a consolidation. To the best of my knowledge. What are you talking about consolidation? There, nobody has talked about any consolidation. These files have not been consolidated. I think that is the next process we'll be going into. Nobody has talked about any consolidation. If you look at the record, you will find that the directions for today's hearing are given specifically on each and every time. There was no consolidation of any matter. Uh, no matter has been consolidated. So let us not uh, uh, dwell on things which really are not for the court. Now matter has been consolidated. Let us proceed from there. If you want to apply for any files to be consolidated, that is OK. As we speak now, there is no consolidation. The direction from this court was very specific on three different files. But my lord, I'm only guided, but when Justice Murima was giving the clarification, I never heard him clarify whether the Kiroboya file has been integrated into the Nairobi system. Uh, because we, we cannot be then be dealing with a file that is really Kiroboya. Because of course, if there is no integration in your ship, then there is a rack that is made. Uh, Mr. Mr. Let me answer you. We said that record speaks for itself. And uh, for record, matters which came from from, from Kerguera came in their own record. And the record states here that the matter herein is consolidated with petition E014 of 2024 and the same to be delivered in the Chief Justice for empanelment of bench in terms of the ruling and petition E014 of 2024, a copy of which shall be placed on this file. So your own matter coming from Kerboya was already consolidated. Those proceedings which took place in Kerboya consolidated these two files. So th let that not be an issue here. <laughs> on the direction of issues of 11 by judge, Richard Mongo, these were the directions. The petitions, the petitioner in E 014 2024 to serve their amended petition on all parties. Similarly, the petitioner in E 013 2024 to serve their petition on all parties. Respondents, the petition to file their responses by noon of 17th of October 2024. Given that the files are being routed to the mm -hmm. Chief Justice for the, the party's response to the amended petition and petition E013 of 2024 may be filed in Kerugoya under the Kerugoya case tracking system online, where upon they shall be forwarded to Nairobi. So these proceedings took place in Kerugoya. 
So this court has not consolidated any matter. Petition number E14, E014, and petition number E013 are hereby consolidated. The parties who appeared before the Kogoya court were given those orders. Those were your orders. And uh, with your permission, presiding judge, uh, the, the reason why uh, Nairobi has not opened another file to put together all the files from Kiruguya is this. Going by the orders which were issued by Kiruguya courts, there was a specific order that because of the transmission, parties will still file their documents under the Kurugoya CTS, that is the court tracking system. We had to hold on to that so that not to disadvantage any of the parties until we appear today. Those are some of the things you will deal with here and make order to the Honorable Deputy Registrar to formalize that. So there should be no cause for alarm. We will put everything into its place. I presume now we may now raise the issues that we want to raise, particularly raising for the issues in Kerouet. And uh, I we will then we'll proceed and take Karam on it. They were consolidated, so we will not take further Karam on this. Point. I uh, told the general, I don't know, I have indicated to the court that I need to raise some clarification. Can she then say her piece? I say mine. Now, which matter are we now dealing with? <laughs> 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 Thank you. E15 has to be. Although from Kiribati, there were five people in the business and they have no conservative rights. I hope I have then the heart of the other appearances. My Lord, my Lord, I'm leading the number of advocates in this matter from Kenyaga. E015. Yes, the word is now. Yes. My Lord, uh, the clarification that uh, I seek to raise uh, emanates against this general background. The first one, uh, my Lord, is that. There was a sitting on Saturday, which the court has since explained how that sitting occurred. With regard to that sitting, my client wrote a letter to the owner of the chief justice, which has been placed on record in an affidavit in an application before you that. Uh, protesting amongst other things, that the practice in which a Saturday sitting would be convened for purposes of hearing the executive and organs of government that have violated fundamental rights is a practice that is prohibited under the 2010 Constitution. That letter is on the record. We did not trust that the Honorable the Chief Justice could actually do that because she knows the history about what used to happen. But we now learn, Your Lordship, sir, that you are convened by the Honorable of the Justice Will, the Deputy Chief Justice. Lady, but Lord, am I arising from that? A one. A legal issue and a matter of articulate. My Lord, under the law, and we do this every day, I practice public law every day. 
arising from that issues of the communication. Speaking for 015, we expected that the general procedure would be, and that is what the orders implies, and required us to come on Thursday this week, that when the Chief Justice appoints a bench, she will do it in writing, as required under Article 47 of the Constitution. We would be given the number of those judges and the day that they will be sitting. This day, we have not received officially, because even when the sitting happened on Saturday, I think I have a right to raise those issues. Let's give a I just want it for good order. Okay. Oh, is that a okay. clarification? Mungai? Mungai. I am Mungai. I believe he will speak in response as soon as I'm done. Proceed. My Lord, I wanted to assist the court because my learned friend has, I believe, filed a substantive application so that the court does not hear speeches in vacuo, my learned friend should identify what application he is ventilating so that even we taking notes know what we should be responding to. That's all I want to say. Professor Bungai was a former attorney general. I respect him. He was also my teacher, my professor for criminal law. But my lord, the point that I wish to make, huh? that I am acting for specific clients today, and that's the court, the court. I should be having silence in the response. And I've indicated that we have formal applications. What we are raising is an issue that is arising from what Judge Murima has indicated. We could not put it earlier in an application. So if I may proceed, my Lord, the issue is this, that we expected a notification in writing that these judges have been appointed and they would seek on a particular day. All those notifications, including in cases of abductions, have been that the first city by a bench has been on a working day. All applications, and I'm aware of this as a fact. So then the first clarifications would be, on what basis would in an application by the executive be convened on a Saturday. That is a substantive issue because of the second reason that our background that we are giving. But under the 2010 constitution, the constitutions provide for the Bill of Rights. My Lord, under the former constitution, Well, under the former constitution, we used to have a practice in which we had an officially a bill of immunities for the state, where the constitution, the state could conduct its business on weekends and outside court sitting hours. But because of that reason, that's why I'm saying, this we are sitting here pursuant to the orders made in Australia. And my Lord, we are also sitting here pursuant to an order made by the Honorable the Chief Justice. My Lord, for purposes of Article 165, I believe it's four of the Constitution, the powers of the Chief Justice to appoint a bench is a substantive power. It is not administrative. This power, my Lord, cannot be shared by the Deputy Chief Justice or with the Deputy Chief Justice. And because it cannot be shared with the Deputy Chief Justice, it is the reason why I say two things. That our instructions is that we must move this court immediately to set aside that order on the basis of its unconstitutionality. The Chief Justice of Kenya cannot appoint anyone, any judge, 
pursuant to Article 165, 4 of the Constitution. And we shall place here uh, the Deputy Chief Justice, a formal application. Issue number two, my lord, arising from that. Let us be discharged the directions of empanelment. My lord, I am saying that we shall make a formal application to discharge that order made by the chief deputy chief justice. That's what we are indicating. Well, my lord, number two, and it is implied in our in the applications for disqualifications that we are filed. Number two is that we raise the issue that for purposes of the Saturday city and today's city, and the thing is out there in the streets and the Republic of Kenya, is that a special bench would be appointed for purposes of vacating the orders that we have made. My Lord, we, I have a lot of respect for all of you that have appeared before previously. But my Lord, pursuant to my instructions that that would be the case, three issues worries us. Number one, we had a sitting on Saturday, the practice of the former constitution, where the executive enjoys special privileges. Number two, my Lord, is that we have confirmed that the only files that are before you are files where we have interim conservatory orders. So that, my Lord, huh? and it is important that this issue is speak for the 190 and with a clear conscience. Two things. My Lord, the first thing would be this, that if this matter is going to be conducted, like today on the basis that only those matters where the Attorney General is itching to set aside conservatory orders are the ones that are going to be had, there would be something wrong because other cases that are even officially before you and probably assigned to you by the actual Chief Justice of Kenya are still pending. So what was this where you prioritize the state as it used to happen those days before we had a new constitution? Issue number two, my lord, is this, the issue of bias. And this is bias by the honorable, the, I think, Ms. Omugai, uh, you are going beyond ordinary comments. If you have an application which addresses those prayers or those issues, I think you... Let me raise the other issue that yes. does not have to do with those prayers. Well, the, the last issue, therefore, would be this. If assuming that cases that were supposed to appear before you are cases that came after the impeachment. My Lord, there are about four matters, one of them in which I appear. And this is a fundamental issue. That matter is coming on Thursday. Okay? There are an express order of the court that has not been set aside. The question would be this, for purposes of good order and for purposes of us making this application, why would it be difficult even for this bench to order all cases, because that is a right to equality under Article 27 of the Constitution, that deals with the same subject matter, come on a specific day where all parties have noticed so that even the issues that we are raising against the Deputy Chief Justice can be formally put on record so that we do not have this anxiety that somebody is speaking off record. But Lord, why I say as I go to see, why I say this is important is this. The matters before you over and over again, the repeated question has been, uh, the right to fair hearing is being sacrificed. Under Article 25 of the Constitution, fair hearing cannot be taken away even during an emergency. It is an absolute right in this country. So that my Lord arising from that, the question that uh, we would like us to be addressed is that to say that we are going to conduct matters by installment and the only justification for the chosen installments being that the deputy chief justice is biased for the state and has therefore constituted a bench that can be able to hear the state's application is clearly not permissible. Yes, sir. So that my lord, I ask the court I, I, I would to not, hold. I would not, uh, please, we should not bring 
the DCJ uh, conduct at this stage because I think uh, that the DCJ discharged our administrative duties the way it should be done. Ah, that is not if you have, if you have, if you have an issue with that, please don't make a generalized, generalized complaint. Well, this is not generalized. It is in writing, and we are making a formal application to ensure everything is done on record. And that, they, they, that right, as I say down, the issue of that right is that we have had a situation before the National Assembly, before the Senate, it didn't seem to matter. Before the High Court, my Lord, I submit the right to fair hearing under the Constitution must count for something. Otherwise, Article 25 would effectively have been amended to please the state. I urge you respect to you. We hear you. Well, my Lord, sir, just to add on what my Lord Trek has submitted on, I don't know. With the permission of the presiding judge, I wish to say this. I wish to uh, make this clarification. The matters which are before us today, the three matters which are before us today, are not here on the basis that some conservatory orders were issued per se. I have stated and I'm repeating. The reason why these matters are before us today is that after the issuance of the conservatory orders, subsequent applications were filed. The applications were filed after the empanelment. Those applications were filed online with, the, with matters online. And it is on the basis of only the applications which were filed and dealt with online. That is why we are here today. So I want to correct the insinuation that we are here only to deal with uh, uh, the, 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 I mean the matters in which conservatory orders were issued. We don't know how many conservatory orders were issued. We are only here to deal with specifically the application of paper five, which came to our attention. So kindly let us be as factual as possible. We will deal with all the matters. I can assure you there is no issue about any of the things you are raising. If you have any substantive issue, we are here. If the application for refusal, there is no problem. We will hear. If we feel we have to get a protest, there should be no problem. We are all here to defend the constitution of Kenya. So don't you worry. Don't don't you worry. Give us time. Let's take this thing step by step and we will do the best we can as a bench. Allow us to worry when we are grand. And Council Negra, you know, when you argue, uh, like uh, the way Mr. Mugoy has argued, that court sat on Saturday, you are arguing on both sides of the court. You know that we work, we work online. And most of you know that matters reach us any time, at any time, whether at night, and that is what the new constitution and the e-finding system has brought to this country. So when you argue selectively, you mislead the people. You mislead, you mislead the out people outside there that cause sat on a Saturday. There's nothing like that. We attend to matters online as and when they come. But let we have had the samurai. We, let us not be an exchange between between the court and yourself, because we are really very neutral party. Let us hear also from from the other side. We haven't. We haven't really. Yeah, that's, yeah, we have the, 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 this E015 in Kilogo, the orders of your brother, Mr. Justice Mungo, we are leaving at 4 p.m. Where did the file come from Kirinyaga to go to the Deputy Chief Justice? It is two hours drive to Kirinyaga. When did the Deputy Chief Justice sit in the middle of the night on Friday? 
to give them parameters, parameters to articulate these issues for the sake of the nation. We are not just dealing with the removal and the challenge to the removal of the deputy president. We are dealing about the president that will be set for the removal of deputy presidents in future and the removal of presidents in future. I don't preside in charge. I want to renew my request that the court permit us to be ordered. We are now about to hear a second speech, a third speech, a fourth speech. This court, as we have been told by the senior most advocate here, is a court of record. What application are we hearing so that we on this side can prepare to respond? We cannot respond to speeches. There is an application here, if I may, the Honorable P.K. Moiti. There is an application for the recusal of judges. It is the right of my learned colleagues to bring such an application. But having brought it, they should then confine themselves to it. Then we can respond to it. But we cannot sit here the whole afternoon listening to speech after speech intended for another audience other than this one. Um, There's no other audience. Uh, let, 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 let us be clear on this. The applications before this court, we have stated which applications are in this court for hearing today. We have no authority to call any other file because files, when they there's a prayer for impanelment of a bench, those files go directly to the Honorable of the Chief Justice. So we have no authority to call any other file to ourselves. That will be quite unprecedented. So what we have here are the three files which we mentioned, in which there are internal orders where one party is seeking to leave those orders. If there is an application for recusal or whatever it is, I think you really need to put it on record so that we deal with it and before any other thing we can deal with it and uh, dispose of it one way or the other. But uh, I don't think it's, it's really necessary to have speeches in the absence of specific application and prayers. The fellowship, the so-called speeches have been um, invited by the disclosure from the court. We, the advocates appearing for the petitioners, we were not aware of how the bench was constituted. So when it was disclosed to us that the bench was constituted by the deputy chief justice, it necessitated us to address you, your lordships, on Article 165, Clause 4, on the constitutionality of the constitution of this bench to hear these three specific files. And that is the issue that we want to address even before we go to the application for the case. Because it's a humble view, your lordship, that the so-called empowerment of this bench to hear these specific files is itself unconstitutional. By the reading of Article 165, Clause 4, it is our reading that the only person who has the capacity to empower a bench is the Chief Justice. So we want to urge this court to perhaps in, uh, interpret for us whether the Deputy Chief Justice can empower a bench. Number two, your lordship, is when did, where did the Chief Justice get the authority to empower the, the bench? Was the Chief Justice present? Where did the Chief Justice execute her functions and her mandate under Article uh, 165, Clause 4? What was the necessity of the delegation of this function? Those are pertinent issues, your lordship, that requires clarification before we go to the roots of the matter, the crux of the matter. It's our Submissions, your lordship, that the Chief Justice, who is exercising delegated powers, cannot further delegate the Deputy Chief Justice. That is why the Constitution is in white and black, that the obligations and the duty belongs to the Chief Justice. Finally, your lordship, the reason why we find ourselves in this situation is because of what the court is struggling to explain to us, that three files have graciously generated expediency, and other files that were consolidated 
that six five with the lead five two five twenty two have no reasons why they should be before you. Noting that your lordship, those matters who are equally satisfied as urgent and raising heavy constitutional matters. When I looked at your orders, your lordship, that you issued to someone as today, you repeated the same that they raise weighty constitutional matters. Why are we being discriminated by the court that our files are not considered as a priority? And the, prior, the files with orders are the only ones that the court is sitting on a Saturday. The chief justice is expanding, the, the deputy chief justice is expanding the bench. We are called by, uh, in a lightning speed to appear before you. Is it not because there are some orders that the state wants to vacate? You cannot run away from that reality, your lordship, most respectively. My lord, with your kind permission, for the record, uh, Dr. Kamodo, for the chief respondent, in is the team. I believe the reason we are here and the reason why we took quorum is because we recognize that there are different parties in these proceedings. <coughs> so it will be abominable for a section of the parties to seek to colonize these proceedings and treat them as if they are the only ones entitled to the audits of the court. So in this regard, my proposal is as follows, that each of the party who has, whose representation has been taken, gets to indicate to the court what applications they have before the court, so that we're able to proceed methodically. And each party then, the court can then give directions on how we move to treat each of those applications. Otherwise, we may be here indefinitely if each of the parties takes the opportunity accorded to make lamentations, make speeches, and to move. So we respectively urge that we get an opportunity for each of the parties to ventilate the issues because the paper respondent has a pending application which is due to file, a preliminary objection which even contests the jurisdiction of the High Court to hear the matters because it is a matter relating to the domination of a presidential uh, of a reputed president, which in our view lies squarely within the domain of the Supreme Court. So we once accorded an opportunity procedurally, we shall ventilate all those issues and hopefully the matters being raised or to be raised about refusal and so on, they will fall by the wayside. Thank you, my Lord. Lord, for the fifth interest, for the first interested party. Mr. Gora, I, just uh, I, I was about to interject uh, when Mr. Uh, uh, was cancelled. Uh, Mr. Dr. The question? Yes. So that was uh, addressing. And that is exactly uh, why I wanted to. I wanted us to have order in the way we, we, we conduct this proceeding. And I was about to ask Mr. Degwa, yes. uh, after all that, what is your application? You know, she, I'm very clear in my application. My application for which... application can only come after We, we are now just an application, you respond. Well, what is it that you want? You know, she, permit me to make an application under the Mutunga rules <coughs> that following the disclosure of the court this morning, that was made by Justice Murima, that this Honorable Court does determine whether the Deputy Chief Justice has the power to impanel the bench under Article 165, Clause 4. Your Lordship, and whether, if she has any power of that nature, the same ought to be communicated to the members of the Republic by the Chief Justice, that, that is to say, in logic, that the Chief Justice has 
delegated her powers under Article 165, Clause 4, to empanel this bench. You know, this is the background of my application. That on the 14th of October 2024, the Honorable Chief Justice did, did empanel this bench to hear and adjudicate over six matters which were consolidated with the lead file being 522. And the files that were consolidated in lordships, my lady, were two, 522, 509, 537, 528, 525, and 506. Your Lordship, it is our humble submissions that this bench was exclusively and panel to handle those files. And that the communication was effectively made to the parties by the Honorable Chief Justice. I am giving the background of my application. And that we are aware that subsequently other files, and the most important one is E014 of 2024, which came from Teruguaya, was equally slated for empanelment before the Chief Justice. To date, Your Lordship, there is no communication from the Office of the Chief Justice other than this morning that this file was equally empaneled and designated for hearing the instruction. Your Lordship, the other, uh, the other ground is this, Your Lordship, that when we appeared before you on the 16th of October, Your Lordship, we sought your indulgence, Your Lordship, to have a further mention on the 18th of October. I'm sorry, we are constrained to interject, uh, seek your guidance. My name is Mutomi, appearing for Professor Kubiki. Listening to my colleagues, he is making an application before this bench, complaining about wrong supposedly made by the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice in bringing us to this session of today. For me, the clarification I wish the court to provide is whether an application of that nature can be made informally without the CJ and the DCJ being made parties to that application and being offered an opportunity to explain so that uh, to be fair on uh, these state officers, it's easy to speak to the gallery and cast all manner of insinuations and aspersions against them. And if my Lord finds that an application of that nature cannot be made informally without actually filing a formal application and joining the CJ and the DCJ so that they have a chance to respond to these insinuations. I suggest again, and I beg the court, I'm a very junior counsel, but Professor Mugay wonders that we run the risk of coming to a court of law to speak to the gallery. In parliamentary language, what I fear is happening is what is called filibustering, my lord. To filibuster is where you go to a forum intended to deal with the business of the day, and you keep making speeches upon speeches that have no bearing on the business of the day, where the motive is to ensure that the business of the day is not conducted. To the best of my knowledge, the business of the day, were, there were applications on their side, there were applications on our side, and the court was graced enough to give both sides an opportunity to come today to ventilate those applications. Instead, we've lost two hours, my lord. We have not been addressed on those applications. We are just killing bastard. My lord, my lord, perhaps if I may. Yes. Yes, my lord. My lord, you have been invited to interpret articles 161 and 163, 1B. One and two, which designate the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice as head and Deputy Head of the Judiciary. And you're being asked to inquire into the manner that they perform 
their duties as head of the judiciary and to interpret Article 165.4. That can only be a substantive, through a substantive application to which all parties must respond. I, I think my concern then, and Debo and uh, my friend uh, uh, Kibe, is that you are taking the court for a long ride and we are ending up wasting a lot of time in the court. I wish you could go to the issues. If the question is, if you are ending up with an application for the disqualification of the bench, why can't you go to that point instead of beating around the bush, as you say? Well, if I may, um, just to bring it to the court's attention, that the issue that uh, my learned colleagues have taken up um, rather dramatically this morning is an issue that they have taken up with the Chief Justice by way of a letter. Before they came to court, they have taken up those issues with the Chief Justice by way of a letter. If that is the avenue that they have chosen, then let them deal with it by way of the letter. It isn't anything that should take your Lordship's time. That letter remains. They have written it to the Chief Justice. We have been copied on the letter, and we await the learned Chief Justice's response to the letter. It isn't anything that should take up time this morning. because the disclosure has been made here. And since that issue goes to the core of your capacity, it ought to be resolved preliminary. Whether you have been properly impaneled is the most preliminary of preliminary issues. We ask that you give a direction of the nature of a timeline when that application ought to be filed, a timeline when responses will be filed, then give us a return date to come and kind of pass that application on whether you are properly constituted. Because if it turns out that you are improperly constituted, even the issue of recusal becomes secondary. But if it comes out that you are properly constituted, then the issue of recusal now follows. I add that if you follow that route, in accordance with my teacher's guide and Professor Gideon guide, there will be greater order and coherence. But I thank you. But is that an adjournment? Is that, is that a lawyer applying for an adjournment? Because he's saying, and perhaps I'm wrong, that even the recusal commission comes after the examination of the question of impanelment. If that be so, they may leave, they, they, they normally leave court, they may leave, they left uh, the Senate, they may leave court. We let them say where well, we are trying to adjourn. Is that, um, is that the mark, they normally leave court, where they left Senate, my palatable in this court, my lord? That no, because it's an adjournment. Is that remark, palatable for my lord and my lady? Palatable, because, you know, we, we have death for our member. If you have a professor of law, Misbehaving at the bar, then they have to <laughs> I'm urging that you direct that that's a map to be drawn first, then we make progress. I'm urging my lord. The remark was made in your presence. I'm urging it to be drawn first, then I can respond. My lord, I have no problem with drawing the remark, but the point is, it is a veiled application for adjournment because Mr. Goya is saying that the court must address the question of impanelment before the recusal. So why can't you just get to the point? I have, 
I am answering your question now, but I know that he has withdrawn. He said he has no problem with the drawing, but he will withdraw. I want to withdraw first, my lord, because I'm entitled to take it. I have no problem with withdrawing. They may friends are back. No, I have no problem, my lord. I withdraw the remark, Thank but so Thank you. there's process. Thank you. Let me now address the question. <laughs> <laughs> My teacher and my mentor of many years, I have no disrespect for him. I just know my own dignity as such, and because I can't protect my own dignity if my own is in question. But having said that, um, my Lord Judge Grima, you are a witness that the issue of how this bench was in panel has been disclosed here when we are here. We have raised concerns to Lanet's colleagues, Akita Mongai, and Lanet colleague, Mr. Jeremy, uh, Mr. Debwa, that we now want to check that on an issue. My colleagues have rightfully submitted that that matter requires a substantive application. Rightly, we agree with them fully. But you agree with me that if you are improperly constituted, then you cannot make one more step. Is that when that request that my Lord Yadrima asked, how do we move forward? I also had my learned uh, mentor, Professor Gidu Mulia, again ask, how do we move in an orderly manner? I'm suggesting let that substantive application be placed before you. Being as preliminary as it appears on the face of it, give back-to-back -back timelines on the compliance by the parties. Let the parties come and now formally address you on that question. They'll have a determination on that question. I humbly pray. Thank you. Allow me, my lords and my lady, to address the issue of disclosure, which is actually being attributed to Mr. Justice Mwema. And sometimes it's good to tell the truth, because the issue of how this page was empaneled has not come to light. It is now. The actual view of it, and this, and it all should have, they would have found out, the letter which was written this morning, which we have it was received on the it was written on the 20th, the 20th of October, as actually one pertinent question is posed whether the file was actually taken to the Chief Justice and at what time. So they are actually knowing something regarding that. Then we are dealing with constitutional functions under Article 165.4, which means they were saying only the Chief Justice can constitute this bench. So they actually knew how the bench was constituted, and that possibly the only reason we should be given is why the file was taken to DCJ, possibly because of the absence of the Chief Justice. They will have to take themselves to why we have the Chief Justice being the head of the judiciary and the Deputy Chief Justice being the Deputy Head of the Judiciary. In the absence, that's what the Constitution provides. In the absence of the Chief Justice, it is the Deputy Chief Justice who is supposed to do administrative work, which, and, and here, let's not feel embarrassed at what you are told. But as we do in the Parliament, you go around in circles to waste time so that the motion possibly is defeated by a fruition of time, which is what they are trying to do. The truth is this. It is well known in practice that the court's administrative functions can be done at any time of the day, including this bench can sit up to midnight without anybody, anybody questioning. So the issue when the Chief Justice, Deputy Chief Justice sat does not arise. As to what happened on Saturday, again, this is purely administrative. Uh, for the speak of the Senate, we be hand? Yes. Uh, my Lord, allow me to assist the court. And uh, but listening to the speech, not an application made by my colleagues uh, on the petition aside, but Lord, I just want to state that uh, the deputy president filed his petition on Friday. And my Lord, on the same day, he got conservatory orders. My Lord, he accessed justice in accordance with the framework in Article 48 of the Constitution. But, my Lord, justice cuts both ways. My Lord, the respondents on the same day filed an application to set aside those conservatory orders. My Lord, properly constituted, this court has issued directions that those applications be heard today. 
My Lord, under the Mutunga rules, there is a fundamental doctrine which we are all missing. The doctrine of timely resolution of such kind of disputes, especially disputes that are of immense public interest. So, my Lord, if you look at the application which has been made, or speech made by the, by, 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 by the petitioners, my Lord, you will see that they want to split hairs. But Lord, the Constitution expressly provides that the Chief Justice shall appoint uh, a bench to sit on matters which raise substantial questions of law. But my Lord, at the same time, that Constitution which requires to be read conjunctively says the Deputy Chief Justice shall deputize the Chief Justice. So my Lord, what is the fuss about it? So my Lord, my request is that the application of this speech by the, by the petitioners is solely meant to delay the business of the day. And my Lord, I request in public interest, my Lord, I request in public interest that you give directions. We proceed with the application. We are here to respond. The application uh, for conservatory orders. And my Lord, you also hear our application to set aside the conservatory orders. My Lord, that will make juridical sense and promote public interest. Thank you. My Lord, if I may just add. Uh, this court has the control of the, the proceedings. And uh, this is a very weighty matter. It concerns the deputy president of this country. I will not allow everybody to speak. Because if everybody's going to speak, we are going to head nowhere. A challenge has been posed on the validity of this bench to sit. This is the direction we are making. The application challenging the validity of this court to sit must be filed within one hour and responded to within and one hour. We will come at two to listen to that application.